My favorite thing about Christmas is celebrating the birth of Jesus and spending time with my family. Welcome to the Telling It Our Way podcast. I'm Becca. And I'm Allie. In this podcast, we bring you stories by disabled people about disabled people. Stories from the daily lives of self-advocates with intellectual and developmental disabilities. These are real people with complicated lives. They don't want your pity and they don't exist to inspire you. This is not inspiration porn. It is the holiday season, Allie, and we're talking about holidays of all kinds today. So what's your favorite holiday? Thanksgiving, hands down. And you know, the reason why I love Thanksgiving is because it's always been a holiday that was mine. I could do whatever I wanted with it once I became an adult. My wife and I decided to get married on the day before Thanksgiving because we've always claimed it as our opportunity to make food for our friends, invite family if they're around, but we've always lived apart from family, so mm-hmm. it's always been that time where it was just ours. We could do whatever we want. The Christmas holidays, other holidays, we always had to travel, sleep on floors and couches and drive for 12 hours, and Thanksgiving, it's like in your pajamas, making whatever random food you want, turkey or no turkey, it didn't matter. Peeling potatoes while watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Nothing better, <laughs> nothing better than that. <laughs> so what did you do for Thanksgiving this year? Well, we took a little hiking trip a few days before Thanksgiving to celebrate our 10-year anniversary, and then we went over to two friends' house and um, stayed in our pajamas all day and ate a lot of dessert. That sounds perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. It was so what great. a great holiday. It was a fantastic holiday. I cannot complain at all. <laughs> well, I I love 4th of July, actually. A summer holiday is all, it's, I'm all about it, right? Being outside all day, eating a vegetarian hot dog off a grill, nothing better. Nothing better. You know, 4th of July can be really fun. I'm not a big fan of fireworks, which is the one turn off for me about the 4th of July. Mm. But I do love a good grill. I love a good barbecue. Um, And I love, it's another one of those holidays where it's anything goes. There's Mm -hmm. not a lot of prescriptions for it. So I get that. So we're going to hear two stories today about some holidays. And our first story comes from Molly. And um, I can remember when we spoke to uh, the group that Molly belongs to, when we said that we wanted to do an episode on holidays, her face just lit up and she was immediately like, me, pick me. And so she had this great story about her her love of Christmas that we're going to hear now. Perfect timing. Molly Dibel, my favorite thing about Christmas is celebrating the birth of Jesus and spending time with my family. That's me, my mom, my dad, my doggy nephew, my sister, my brother-in-law, and my two nephews. I put ornaments on the tree. I like putting penguin decorations out. That's my favorite animal and I put them out in the winter time. I like giving gifts at Christmas time. Last year I got my sister and brother-in-law some dishes. One Christmas, we were in our family room. I opened my present, and right there was a bowling ball. I told my parents I wanted a bowling ball of my own, and they knew. I got a bowling ball, a bowling bag, some bowling shoes, and a bowling towel. The bowling ball is blue, white, and red, and it has my name on it. It has small holes because my fingers are small. I put it on the towel when I'm done and wipe it off. I carry it in the bag. And then my shoes are size 4 because that's how small my feet are. That was my favorite Christmas. I literally loved a bowl with my friends. I was so surprised and happy I got it. I wasn't expecting it. I said a big thank you to my parents for it. I want you to tell the story so that people know what Christmas is about. Thanks to Molly for sharing her experience with Christmas. It was so fun to have Molly in the studio sharing about how much she likes to spoil her nibblings. They are really lucky to have her. And it makes me think about some of the favorite gifts I've bought for others. So one year I went shopping at the antique mall uh, nearby and I found all five figures from New Kids on the Block. I know. (laughs) And I gave them to my sister, my older sister, for Christmas. This is like only... 
seven or eight years ago. So <laughs> 30 years into New Kids on, on the I Block. Thought, I thought this was a story about your childhood, but oh, no. Oh, no, no. This is like, yeah, this is really not that long ago. And my sister even gave me a social media call out saying it was her favorite, most unexpected president of the holiday season. So that did it for me. I loved it. Wow. Do you have a favorite present you've given someone? Uh, I do. I do. So as I've said on previous episodes, I'm a maker, right? I like to make gifts in part because it's hard for people to be mad at you if you make them a gift, even if it's not very good. Um, but one year, my sister and I, who I'm, I'm very close to, we had taken a trip that summer. We drove out to, this is going to be a really dorky story, which all what of you, else is new? Right. All of you at this point should be aware of that. We drove out to Princeton to go to their special archives, and they keep all of the unpublished J.D. Salinger short stories there. <laughs> so we had driven out to, to read these stories, which aren't published anywhere. Um, and it was a, a real kind of bonding moment for us. We cried over these beautiful stories. And then that Christmas, I was able to find some versions of them online and kind of partial versions or versions that were in, uh, you know, like corrupted files, basically. <laughs> and I was able to take all of those files, um, print them out, and I bound her a book with those short stories. And that, I think, remains probably the best gift I've ever given. I would love to get Maggie on here to just actually hear what she thought about receiving those stories from her, <laughs> from her sister, Becca. That sounds like a, an amazing gift. In our next story, we get to hear about Jen and how she tells us about a really special Christmas from her childhood where she got to see her favorite sports team, the Phoenix Suns. I am a fun, spirited person. And I love the magic of Christmas. I have Santa hats and an elf hat I like to wear around. It's just that one time of the year that I get to be fun and different. And of course, I love opening gifts. In December of 1992, I was 14 years old and I was in junior high. As we got ready for winter break, I heard my classmates talking about going on trips and celebrating the holiday with their family. And me, what do I get to do? Have surgery. And me in lots of pain all, all winter. I was scheduled to have scoliosis surgery just before Christmas at Good Samaritan Hospital. Carrington rods were placed all along my spine. Those are metal rods that are infused into my spine. I was nervous and I was scared. Those feelings everyone has when they have a surgery. When I woke up, it felt like a, I was hit by a freight train. It was a very painful surgery, but I was so glad it was over. I had a morphine pump, but this was not giving me any relief. I, I was glad to see my parents again. My whole time in the hospital, I was never alone. I stayed in the hospital for a couple of days. One day, my nurses mentioned that the Phoenix Suns basketball team would be visiting the hospital. They were having a jam session that was televised live with all the trimmings of Christmas decor. The jam session is the Suns' podcast for all their players. It's a way for the fans to meet and to get to know their favorite players. The nursing staff thought it might lift my spirits 
because I was a Phoenix Suns fan. They asked if I wanted to go, and I said, heck yeah. They got me in a wheelchair, and I got cleaned up as best as I could. My dad bought me two basketballs to get autographed. The players were also signing stuff basketballs for everyone. I went down in my wheelchair and my ivy tree. There was quite a crowd down there with the kids and youth from the hospital and all their parents and families. It was overwhelming. Coach was Paul and these players were part of this jam session. Dan Barley, Tom Chambers, Frank Johnson, Kim Hempton, Mark West, Oliver Miller, and Charles Barkley. There was a lot of celebration surrounding Charles Barkley. He was a new player for the Suns and had just arrived in the Valley. The news anchor that hosted the Phoenix Jam session allowed the children and youth patients to ask the players questions. At the end of the session, everyone had been fawning over Charles Bartley, who seemed to think quite highly of himself. I didn't even know who he was at that time. The news anchor with his microphone in hand came up to me and asked who my favorite Suns player was. Everyone thought I would say Charles Barkley. I said loud and proud, Kevin Johnson, KJ is my favorite player. The entire lobby broke out into laughter, including Charles Barkley. He was used to getting all of the attention. If you ever have back surgery and then go to an event, never have anyone sit behind you. The woman sitting behind me kept tapping the bottom of my wheelchair and tapping it, and it hurt every time. I was in tremendous amount of pain during this live sun jam session show but it was really awesome to be a, a part of it and meet some of my favorite sons players i got pictures and autographs to me up close and personal with the players it was really neat not everyone gets a chance to do that. This story shows what it's like to walk in my shoes. It's a part of me. Everybody has their issues that they deal with. And this is mine. Plus, it makes a memorable Christmas story to tell others. Well, thank you, Jen, for telling us that story. Um, the the sort of ironic twist there at the end is my favorite part. Jen actually called me um, a few months before we recorded this and tell, told me this story while I was driving in the car, and I was just like cracking up. And I was like, you have to tell this on the podcast. So I'm so glad that she was able to tell that. Um, you know, I, I think that we've had a few stories this season that have dealt with sports and neither you or I are. are. We're not players. We're not <laughs> athletes. Uh, I know it would be shocking and surprising if you saw both of us to recognize that we aren't actually athletes. But we've had we had a wonderful story earlier this season about the Special Olympics and how mm -hmm. it has really become a place of leadership development for one of our contributors 
Mm-hmm. And then Jen's story about her love of sports. So we think that next season we'd really like to tell some more stories about sports, but we ourselves are not the experts here. So if you have a great story about sports that you'd like to tell, please, please contact us because we want to hear it. You can find us at www.wgte.org slash telling it our way. And there's a contact form there. So if you're interested in telling a story, please reach out to us. Yes. So we are excited. Next episode will be our final episode of the year, and it's going to be our New Year's resolutions episode where we'll hear from all of the season storytellers. So everyone is coming back, and they're going to share their wishes and goals for the new year. Will there be love and commitment? New jobs? What will be their resolutions? Oh, I'm not, I'm not spoiling any secrets. You're just going to have to tune in. <laughs> and on that episode, we're also going to hear from someone whose name you've heard many times throughout this season. We'll have our associate producer, Connor Smenner, come on to explain what he does behind the scenes to make the podcast happen. And then Ali and I will also share a little bit more about how we found guests for the podcast, how we work to develop these stories, a little bit of a kind of behind the scenes peek into what we do here at Telling It Our Way. All of this is to get us ready for the second part of season one. So we'll be back on the air coming spring 2024. And before we end, we just want to thank our contributors, Molly and Jen, our associate producer, Connor Smenner, and our Telling It Our Way advisory board, Joe Rita Fox, Quinn Thomas, and Gavin Daly. Special thanks to WGTE and our producer, Chris Pfeiffer. To access transcripts for the show and any other show notes, please visit wgte.org slash our way. I'm Allie Day. And I'm Becca Monsalione, and you've been listening to Telling It Our Way. WGTE. Voices around us. WGTE is supported in part by American Rescue Plan Act funds allocated by the City of Toledo and the Lucas County Commissioners and administered by the Arts Commission.